Well, we've never had much trouble with deer on this property at all, except when we planted sunflowers. And when they got up about six or eight inches tall or 10 inches tall, they would chew them down to stumps. But we left here two days ago and these fruit trees had no problems, had leaves everywhere. And now you can see that little bambies come in here and chewed off everything that they wanted. And here's the crab apple. It's not gonna kill it, but it's not gonna help it any. Got these cages out. And you can tell from here, this little plum tree was full of leaves. And there are quite a number of branches that only have a few. A little plum still on there, but it's definitely uh, missing a few leaves. Here's my Granny Smith. Uh, I'm sure the deer come in here and eat apples on the ground. They probably pull a few off the tree, but they have never eaten the leaves off of it. See this? This whole low hanging side down in here. Now go kill a tree, but you can't really put a cage around this. Still tons of apples on it. Well, I've been whittling on my compost piles more. My bride's over there weeding. She loves to weed. Thank God. And we uh, weeded this whole outside edge because there's some wire grass on here. And I will generally spray Roundup on the edge here just to keep it in check. Uh, it's one of the few things I use Roundup for. But this bed needs a little bit more compost. You can see just a few things up in it. That compost in that trash can is to cover all this. We did uh, open up our carrots, a little carrots this time of year. Not going to really do a whole lot in Virginia. Still got some in the middle to do. And the other day I was talking about suckering. And I was talking about uh, plant tomatoes get most of their diseases from soil borne spores. And uh, all that right there, besides some of the leaf litter and compost that I raked up with it, is all the branches that I pulled off these trees, these uh, bushes of tomatoes. Because see, a tomato plant has leaves down near the bottom. Here's one I didn't nip off all the way. But as the plants get bigger, those come out. And you have to cut them off. And I don't really need that little sucker. But uh, see, it's all clear now. That's probably the lowest one, but water's not gonna necessarily splash up that high. And uh, as those leaves get bigger, they'll get longer and be closer to the soil. So when it rains and it splashes up on it, you get these diseases on it and I had some laying out and I wasn't going to do a video and then I decided to do a video another thing you want to do these are wilted but if you see any of these leaves on your tomato plant that has the, the little spores on it little brown circles little gold brown circles you need to cut them off once they've been cut off they're hard to see but any of the spots They'll start sometimes as a real light little white splashing spot. And then it'll turn into the, a darker uh, yellowish brown with a little ring around it. And then those spores will erupt, fall to the soil, rains on the soil, splashes up on the lower leaves and does it over again. Once the spores get on the lower leaves, they get in the stem and eventually you'll see all that disease work up the plant. So it's best that the water can't splash on them. The sweet millions are growing like weeds. They're up to at least my nose. Since yesterday was their anniversary, 46 years, my daughter came down here yesterday morning and brought this table with the umbrella and put it up so we'd have some place to sit in the shade when we're fooling with the garden. Now we have a table that's wearing out in the gazebo 
and we just might take this table and put in the gazebo. The chairs are really nice, but when you sit in them with the small legs, they will go down in the soil. And those old white stackable chairs we use has a little bit bigger foot, and it won't sink down in the ground. But this cranks up and down, has a cover for it and all. Uh, she didn't tighten that up because she isn't but so strong. And that was a nice thing to do for us. And there's the umbrella I probably had. I was looking at the table so much I wasn't looking at the video. And the wire guards around the trees seem to have done the trick. There doesn't appear to be too many more leaves missing. A little while ago, a black snake, about at least six feet long, came across the yard here, paused on this bank, and went right on across the gravel toward that little shed over there. <coughs> Well, I'm working on my compost pile. I've got it down about a half because it was above these wires. We pulled this section out today so I could get in here and get this up with the lawnmower and then dump the bags in the garden. Late in the afternoon on Saturday, I have to take my watch out to tell you what day it was, but we've uh, got a few carrots showing. I know it's the wrong time of year to be growing them. I just wanted to see if they would be relatively straight. If they are, then we could grow at least 10 inch long carrots. And let's see, pull my watch out of my pocket. Uh, it's Friday the 19th of June. And we've got compost material on the outside of this bed to try to keep all that wire grass from getting into the cucumbers. We've uh, got a few carrots and just need to kick that over and spread it out. We got the uh, bird netting up for our lima beans. We already had it up for the Kentucky Wonders. Squash are still there. We haven't planted anything in this row, and this is what we got to weed in the last bit at the other end. Now, I weeded this with a stirrup pole and covered it with compost out of my compost pile. I cut grass and covered that yesterday, and that's compost out of the compost pile. And now this one has to be weeded out. And then I've cut this with a lawnmower. It would just make it easier to turn it under with the plow.